We all create content, whether it's posting an image on Facebook, creating a report to share with your department, or posting a YouTube video on the easiest way to grow tomatoes in your garden. We create and share content at work and at home. When we share, we intend for the content to be usable by others, but as fantastic as the automated tools within our apps may be, we still need to take action to ensure everyone can reasonably use the content. Federal laws require creators to make accessible content. When creating content for work, it's especially important to adhere to accessibility laws and policies. But I won't belabor the point. Instead, I'd like to remind everyone that we all get there. At some point along the way, we start to lose our sight or our hearing becomes worse. Accidents happen and sometimes these things happen quickly and unexpectedly. What then? We all depend on engaging in a digital world and you hope that the content you need will be accessible. Accessible to you, your friends, your family, and your children. Creating accessible content can seem burdensome, but by taking one step at a time, you can make an enormous impact. Let's cover creating Word documents, videos, and PowerPoint presentations. Microsoft Word is the go-to app we all use to create letters, memoranda, proposals, reports, lists, and forms. A properly formatted document will accommodate the use of a screen reader. This is the primary tool many people use to access and interact with digital content, either through read aloud audio technology or touch to read technology. Recently, Microsoft has added a built-in immersive reader accessibility tool to many of their online apps, including Word. The reader allows users to listen to document text read aloud and allows users to adjust how text appears by modifying line spacing, color, and more. The key to creating accessible documents is to let screen readers read. Use real headings. Traditionally, most document creators use font size and bolding to create artificial headings. While they look fine to us, Microsoft doesn't code them as real headings, which means that screen readers don't read them as headings. Why does this matter? We use headings to help users quickly find and navigate to the content within our document. We use them to create an outline of topics, subtopics, etc. Artificial headings make this extremely difficult for those that depend on screen readers. Please watch these videos for a complete overview of headings. For now, I'll just say that headings are awesome. Once you make it a habit to use real headings, it is not only beneficial to others, but it also makes creating and editing documents easier for you. Using real headings allows you to review and move content in outline form, easily create indexes, a table of contents, or internal bookmarks. And if the document is converted to a PDF, creates linked sections to the topic headings. Can you read this? It says, hard to read. We use color and typographical emphasis, aka bold, italics, underline, to call special attention to certain text within a document. Often this emphasis is very important and we want to ensure the reader doesn't miss something. But did you know that screen readers can't see this information? Which means that it can't warn users about the important information. While it's okay to use this formatting sparingly, we shouldn't depend on it to draw attention to important information. Common tactics such as coloring text in red or using yellow highlight might not always work to call attention to important information. Instead, adding clarifying text like important or warning can usually address the issue. In this example, adding the word past ensures that everyone will notice the important information. There are an estimated 3 million people in the world with color vision deficiency, color blindness, and 20 million Americans have visual impairments including low vision issues. Therefore, we should be deliberate about the use of color and contrast in our documents. For more information, visit Color Blindness and Contrast and Color Accessibility on the WebAIM website. 
For now, I will say that you should always assume that all color will be viewed in grayscale, what you'd get if the color document were printed in black and white. If the color information or the contrast between text and background, for example, are difficult to see, adjust the use of color in your document. Actually, a picture is worth about a thousand words and one good descriptive sentence. Visual content in documents needs a description. Embedded images require the addition of alternate text. Alt text should be brief, concise, accurate, and meaningful. By brief, I mean Twitter tweet short with no more than 150 characters or so. Make your words count and never start with picture of a or image of a. To add alt text, double click the image and select alt text from the format tab. Often, embedded tables and charts also require descriptive text because the presented information is too complex for screen readers to understand. In this case, add a long descriptive explanation after a chart. However, it's best to break up the data of a complex table, one that requires the use of split cells, merge cells, or nested tables, into a string of simpler individual tables. Simple tables can be made accessible in Word with a few easy steps. Select Insert Tab, Tables, and the Insert Table option. When Insert Table is used and your cursor is within the table, Word opens the Table Design and Layout tabs. In Design, notice that by default, the header row and first column checkboxes are selected. This formatting will allow screen readers to announce the column and row headers for data within the table. Also, this formatting will export correctly when converting a document to PDF. Don't create tables using tabs or the Draw Table tool as these methods will not create content accessible by screen readers. Screen reader controls allow users to quickly navigate and use hyperlinks. Readers announce the embedded link and then read the hyperlinks text. When adding links, do the following. Use descriptive text for links or alt text for images. Don't use link in the description. Use text that makes sense when read out of context. Text should be meaningful and should avoid generic words like click here, here, read more, etc. Links must accurately convey the link's destination. Where exactly will the link take the user? Include a full, non-active hyperlink for printed copies. Recent upgrades to M365 technology make creating video so much more accessible from the jump. If you record using Microsoft Teams or Stream, automated captions are created. For more information about recording, including closed captions, please visit the CCI or Tech Tools webpages and select Record in M365 in the More Resources section. Every video you create needs captions, so take advantage of the Auto Captions feature by using Microsoft Teams or Stream to record. While the AI-generated text can be extremely accurate, especially if you record in a noise-free environment, you should always review and edit your captions before sharing. If an M365 video doesn't have captions, select the Generate button in Transcript and Captions. Use the transcript to skim through the video to find and fix obvious mistakes, capitalize proper nouns, and to check specialized words like scientific terms or subject area vocabulary. To edit, hover over the transcript text, select the Edit button, and use your mouse and keyboard to make changes. Remember, while captions are vital for those that have issues with hearing, they are extremely helpful to everyone that accesses your video. The transcript can be used to navigate to areas of the video, either by skimming or by using search to find specific content. Many users prefer to review content with closed captioning on, and in some instances, when sound would be distracting to others, it is the only option to review the video. When creating a screen capture video or sharing your screen during a meeting, make sure the content on your screen can be seen by the viewers. If the content on your screen is set for you, that is to say, 
the normal text size you use every day, you'll need to increase it. When visiting a website, I press Ctrl plus three or four times to get a large text size. In Word, I make the text size large enough to fill my screen. Normally, I set the zoom view to around 250%. Now that the content can be seen, you want to help the user focus on the content you are discussing by either showing the content, the web page, document, etc., or your webcam feed. The viewer should either see you or the what you're talking about. For example, the user should never see graph A while you're talking about content on table C, and the user should either see you when talking about table C or the table when displaying the table would be the most helpful. Again, while guiding focus is extremely important for those with cognitive and vision issues, this presentation approach is helpful to everyone that accesses your video. Watch Presenting with Cameo in PowerPoint for more information about incorporating your webcam into your meeting presentation or video. The purpose of a PowerPoint is to help a speaker present. By creating slides containing images and bulleted text, a speaker can augment their presentation to enhance learning and understanding. However, I can't recommend sharing a PowerPoint with viewers as a standalone document. Why? If you create a good presentation, one that uses the best practices of presentation design, the light content within the presentation will make terrible notes for the participants. Alternately, if you use poor design and cram slides with paragraphs of text, you create a separate set of problems that affect learning. While I will not cover all of them here, one of the issues created includes the death by PowerPoint concept. Instead of trying to make a PowerPoint serve both as a presentation aid and comprehensive notes, I suggest using the export to PowerPoint feature in Word. You can create a presentation in Word using headings and instantly create an AI-built presentation by using the Export to PowerPoint feature. Watch Export Word to PowerPoint with a few clicks. You'll be able to tailor your slides for the presentation and use your Word document as session notes. If sharing your PowerPoint is your only option, you'll need to tackle a few significant challenges to ensure accessibility. As we explore PowerPoint, keep in mind that everything we covered in the Word section applies to working with PowerPoint. Because of how PowerPoint codes content, the new slide templates found in the Home tab must be used. While these templates are limiting in terms of formatting and design, their use is not optional if you plan to share your PowerPoint as a resource. The templates, including the blank option, have been specially coded to allow screen readers to see and read them. Watch Learn How to Insert New Slides in Microsoft PowerPoint for a quick overview. A PowerPoint slide is a canvas filled with text boxes, shapes, images, and videos. We design them to be read by viewers in a pattern, normally top left to bottom right. However, a screen reader can't read items in the intended order unless we make sure all those text boxes and images are listed in the right order. If you use a new slide template, you should only need to fix ordering issues if you move or modify the slide. There are two ways to check the reading order. Watch the Setting Reading Order section from the Creating Accessible PowerPoint Presentations video to learn how to use the selection pane. Content in the selection pane is read by screen readers from the bottom up. You can reposition content by dragging it using this tool, or instead you can change the reading order by using the Accessibility Checker tool. Microsoft Apps have an Accessibility Checker tool that provides instructions on how to fix errors within your presentation, gives warnings on things that might need to be fixed, and tips on things that would make the presentation more accessible. While this tool does not cover every aspect of accessibility, it is the best tool available to us to help improve the digital content we create. To open the checker, select the Review tab and check accessibility. Notice that the Reading Order pane, a second way to set reading order, is a pull-down option. For a quick guide to the checker, watch Learn How to Check Accessibility in Microsoft PowerPoint. Thanks for watching. 
please check the video description below for links to all the resources presented in this video.